we are at a point in history so pivotal that it runs parallel to the period when democracy was born in ancient Athens around 2500 years ago. We're in a whole new territory with the scariest tech we've ever had, and we need rules for it, fast. And this is why Uncle Sam wants you. But not that Sam, this Sam. And he's offering $100,000 to anyone who can figure out how to set up a democratic process for deciding what rules AI systems should follow. But first, on this episode of AI Focus, we get into why it's even happening at all by looking at two releases, one from OpenAI begging for the governing of superintelligence and one from Google DeepMind on model evaluation for extreme risks. We even look at why OpenAI and the entire European Union are going head to head right now. So stay tuned. Randomly, OpenAI came out and said, we need to start thinking about governing superintelligence. That is AI whose intelligence way supersedes a human's. The blog post reads, in terms of both potential upsides and downsides, superintelligence will be more powerful than other technologies humanity has had to contend with in the past. We have a dramatically more prosperous future, but we have to manage risk to get there. Given the possibility of existential risk, we just can't be reactive. Nuclear energy is a commonly used historical example of technology. With this property, synthetic biology is another example. OpenAI then presented three ideas that they think would help. First is the coordination between the leading developers of AI. According to them, this could happen by major governments setting up a project for everyone to play nice, or by all of the major players coming together to agree that they only grow AI at a certain rate per year. I don't trust it. Second, any effort above a certain capability would need to be subject to an international authority that can inspect, audit, test, place restrictions, and etc. Tracking, compute, and energy usage could make this possible. Third, they say they need the technical capability to make superintelligence safe. This capability is still loading. But the company stresses that all projects below this threshold should be allowed to cook. The blog says, Today's systems will create tremendous value in the world and while they do have risks, the level of those risks feel commensurate with other internet technologies and society's likely approaches seem appropriate. By contrast, the systems we are concerned about will have power beyond any technology yet created, and we should be careful not to water down the focus on them by applying similar standards to technology far below this bar. OpenAI wants to build artificial general intelligence, but the kind that can benefit humanity, not destroy it. And they're hoping there are regulations that will lean us more towards the former. OpenAI is giving out 10 $100,000 grants that will fund experiments that will hopefully bring about an idea for governance for superintelligence when it gets here. The sentiment given by OpenAI is that this tech is moving so fast that there's no way we can expect existing authorities to even attempt to control it. So OpenAI will fund individuals, teams, organizations, anyone who can develop proof of concepts for a democratic process that could answer questions about guardrails for AI. The company wants to learn from these experiments and then apply them to a global framework. OpenAI writes in their blog post, while these initial experiments are not, at least for now, intended to be binding for decisions, we hope that they explore decision relevant questions and build novel democratic tools that can more directly inform decisions in the future. This grant represents a step to establish democratic processes for overseeing superintelligence. OpenAI hopes that the grants will establish a process reflecting the platonic ideal of democracy where a broadly representative group of people engage in discussions and decide on an outcome in a transparent fashion. Ideally, OpenAI says, the process will help to answer questions like, under what conditions should AI systems condemn or criticize public figures, given different opinions across groups regarding those figures, and how should disputed views be represented in AI outputs? He goes on to say the primary objective of this grant is to foster innovation in processes. We need improved democratic methods to govern AI behavior. We believe that decisions about how AI behaves should be shaped by diverse perspectives reflecting the public interest. Ironically, OpenAI also provides an example of ChatGPT helping the future regulation creators deliberate. Maybe it's just me, but maybe the robots should sit this one out completely. I mean, are we that lazy that we're having ChatGPT help us create laws to keep it in check? Yikes. By the way, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay updated on all the latest AI news, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. 
It seems that OpenAI is suggesting that this grant program is entirely independent of its commercial interests, but allow me to call BS on that. Altman is very publicly against the EU's new regulation, and this move to pay $100,000 to anyone who can come up with rules seems to be a Hail Mary attempt at getting some type of regulation that won't have an effect on OpenAI's innovation. Altman is so against EU regulation that he's threatened to pull out of the EU altogether. In London this week, Altman said he had many concerns about the EU's planned AI act and said, we will try to comply, but if we can't, we will cease operating. Here's why Altman doesn't like the EU's regulations. It would require creators of foundational models like GPT or Google's Palm to find and reduce risks that their tech could pose and make companies like OpenAI and Google partly responsible for how they're used. The problem with this is that the creators of these foundational models have no effing clue what the potential of their models is and they have no control over what people do with them. And the laws would also force tech companies to publish all the copyrighted data that was used to train their models. And you know they don't want to do that. Can, do, can, can AI, AI, AI and Europe, can it all work together, do you think? Or do you think it's going to come to what uh, the CEO of uh, OpenAI, Sam Altman, is, is, is warning about saying that if, if you, the EU is too strict, right. I'll take my ball and I'll go home? Is, is well, that what <laughs> the thing is for Europe, the question is not so much can we work with AI, but can we actually have a European AI? And I think a lot of the regulation, I mean, what regulation sh should be about uh, in terms of political economy is to favor an environment where AI can be, I mean, where innovation can thrive and Europe has been struggling for a long time, you know, in the technological sphere to have sovereign tech, for instance. And so I think the, the first question for Europe, sadly, uh, is can we actually have AI sometimes, like I own AI. So naturally, OpenAI is paying for any idea that benefits them while also allowing them to say they're in support of regulation, leading the charge even. I'm interested to see what people will come up with and whether it will be effective. Speaking of which, you can apply to the grant program today and once the deadline is reached on June 24th, OpenAI will choose 10 lucky winners. They'll have to showcase a concept involving at least 500 participants, publish a report by October 20th, and open source their findings. But Google DeepMind isn't waiting that long to try and assess risk. They have developed a warning system of their own with the goal of identifying new capabilities and novel risks as quick as possible. Their recent blog states, AI researchers already use a range of evaluation benchmarks to identify unwanted behaviors in AI systems, such as AI systems making misleading statements, biased decisions, or repeating copyrighted content. Now, as the AI community builds and deploys increasingly powerful AI, we must expand the evaluation portfolio to include the possibility of extreme risks from general purpose AI models that have strong skills in manipulation, deception, cyber offense, or other dangerous capabilities. In their latest paper, Model Evaluation for Extreme Risks, Google DeepMind proposes a model that limits extreme risks with a governance process that has responsible training, deployment, transparency, and security. And they paint a bleak picture of what extreme risks can be. Damage in the tens of thousands of lives lost, hundreds of billions of dollars in economic and environmental damage or adverse disruption to the political order. General purpose models usually learn their capabilities and behaviors during training, but controlling the learning process doesn't really work. The problem here is that general purpose models may start to learn dangerous capabilities like deception and manipulation of humans, fine tuning AI systems, weapon design, or assisting humans with these things. There's no moral code on what the general purpose models should lean towards learning. Google DeepMind's model evaluation would help determine to what extent a model has dangerous capabilities and to what extent they're likely to apply these capabilities to cause harm. You can see this displayed in this figure here. The purple squares denote a model's dangerous capabilities and the red denotes the harmful application of these abilities. And this would tell an AI developer that their model has an extreme risk. And they've also developed a blueprint for how model evaluation should fit into training a highly capable general purpose model. It says, the developer conducts evaluations throughout and grants structured modeled access to external safety researchers and model auditors so they can conduct additional evaluations. The evaluation results can then inform risk assessments before model training and deployment. 
All this begs the question, if this is all so risky, why keep moving it forward? OpenAI gives two reasons. First, they believe the economic growth and increase of quality of life will be amazing. They feel the tech will lead to a much better world. Second, they say that super intelligence is going to be created sooner or later, so we might as well do it right. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.